I'm home now with two kids, nine and three alone. One night I'm cleaning the bathroom and my daughter cries out for me. I peek into her room from the bathroom, the next room over. She whispers, there's someone behind the door. I'm wishing there's someone else to take care of this and I pull the door towards me. There's nothing there. My daughter calmly says, they're gone and rolls over and goes to sleep. A few nights later, it happens again. My daughter screams for me. I run in and this time she says, there's someone behind the dollhouse. The dollhouse is as tall as she is and is pulled away from the wall. Nothing she could have done herself. I pick it up and shove it back in the corner. She thanks me and goes back to bed. I'm so afraid I don't sleep for hours. Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. Today I have more of your own stories to read, so let's get into it, shall we? As always, if you have any stories that you would like for me to read, please send them to the email in my description and put YouTube either in like the header or just somewhere at the beginning so I know not to read them on TikTok instead. Although the clips usually end up on TikTok, but you know what I mean. Without further ado, let's get into it. After my breakup with my ex, I lived with my friend and his wife in their house. The house wasn't super old, but I got an eerie feeling and would have strange dreams. My friend had a drinking problem and I would always hear him conversing with his wife when she wasn't home. His wife and I would hear growling in the hallway. It scared us. His wife and I thought maybe he had some sort of attachment because I got up one night to get some water and I felt something watching me from the living room. There was no one there. Now, cut to the strangest dream I had. In my dream, I woke up and opened my bedroom door. Their room was across from mine and the door happened to be open. I saw that he was taking a nap. When his head turned around, his eyes were black. It scared the crap out of me. I told his wife about it and she had someone come in and cleanse the place. After that, I had another dream where he was on the couch talking with his wife, but I knew it wasn't his wife, and I told it to get out. It then showed me what it really looked like. It was gray, no hair, black eyes. I looked out of the window in my dream and saw more of them trying to get into the house. I woke up saying, you aren't welcome here. I moved out shortly after that, but they still live there and still have weird experiences. Ooh, that sounds like the most negative of negative attachments. I don't enjoy that at all. I'm glad you left. The fact that a cleansing didn't even, like, help. Ugh. This next story is titled The Divorce House. I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska, but moved for my ex-husband's job. I have a bunch of stories I can send you, but this one is a big chunk of paranormal stuff I experienced. I love watching your videos, and hopefully this doesn't disturb your peace much. Thanks for reading. What's in here? In 2009, I had a five-year-old son and was pregnant with my daughter and we bought this home in Raleigh, North Carolina. It was just a three-bedroom home in a busy neighborhood tucked behind the Bagwell Cemetery. There were a lot of these old churches in the area with small cemeteries next to them, so it's not something I really thought of as being a red flag for a home. I had a difficult pregnancy. It would hurt no matter what I did. I spent a lot of time reading to escape. I was home with my son, but as he went to school, I was home alone while my husband was working. I would often nap after being wore out from the pain. It all started with what sounded like a child whispering slash yelling, hey, in my ear before going to sleep. I would brush it off most of the time as being some weird in-between awake and sleep thing. One night we had finished dinner and I'd cleaned up while winding down and watching TV. I heard a click of the oven like it was on. I knew I turned it off when I was cleaning, but I went to check anyhow and the oven was on. I turned it off and ignored how weird it was and then the microwave turned on. It just started beeping randomly as if someone was hitting the minus plus button. We stared at it and it reached 99 minutes and would count down a few seconds and then the button would be hit again. We unplugged it and got a new microwave with turn knobs instead of button. My husband thought nothing of this and dismissed it as the microwave being broken. This was the start of what would seem like a child ghost being in our home. When my son was at school, I would hear what sounded like a child running from room to room, jumping on the beds and playing with my son's toys. Anything that made noise would go off. Anytime I brought it up to my husband, he would dismiss it. I would get rid of anything that made noise telling my son, sorry, it broke. In 2011, before my daughter turned one, my father passed away. Seeing a childhood friend at his funeral, she comments that she just needs to get away from Alaska. My husband and I offer for her to live with us. We have a family room that's empty, and a week after she moves in, she tells me, you know your house is haunted, right? I laugh nervously and say, yeah. She tells me a woman came to see her and says she's watching out for me. I feel nervous about it, but don't say anything to my husband because he just doesn't believe me. Within a month of her telling me this, I wake up to a soothing touch of someone rubbing my lower abdomen. It's the kind of touch your mom would do if you had a stomach ache. I wake up just enough to realize what it is. I turn towards my husband and realize he's asleep and his back is to me. I'm shocked. The touch lightens and not wanting to wake anyone up, I just lay there quietly before falling back asleep. 
My friend didn't have to be at work until one and my daughter would nap until around nine or 10 in the morning. So when my daughter went down for a nap, my friend was still sleeping. I went into my bedroom and sat on my bed to read and I suddenly hear whispering. It sounds like 10 people whispering at the same time. I glance around the room and able to pinpoint where the sound is coming from and I see what looks like a woman standing outside of my doorway. She's 5'10", and I can see the side of her face. It looks like her mouth is moving quickly, like a movie on Fast Forward. She's wearing a long dress. It's dark blue, but looks like a light is on behind the fabric. My mind tries to make sense of this, and I call out for my friend. My friend is much shorter and built differently. It's obvious that they're not the same person. I then call out for my friend, hoping not to be alone in this event, and nothing happens. I scream out even louder, and nothing. I'm a fighter in fight or flight, so I jump off my bed ready to fight. I pause because the noise has suddenly stopped. Once I've moved off the bed, the woman is no longer in sight, and I quickly look around the corner to see nothing. I look down the hall both directions and see both my friend and child have slept through the whole thing. I went back to my bed and just waited for them to both get up, knowing it wasn't a bad dream. Not long after this, my friend moves back to Alaska. I'm at home alone with my daughter. She's two, almost three. She doesn't talk much at this point, so when she comes to me from the kitchen and says, Mom, come, I follow her. She walks up the stairs and tells me, My friend, my friend. My friend has got a bleed. He's got a bleed on his arm, a bleed on his leg, and he scares me. I go upstairs and she looks left to right and sees nothing. She goes back to playing. I question, where is your friend? She replies, he went outside. I tell her that her friend has to stay outside and she says, okay, mommy. My husband and I separate. I'm home now with two kids, nine and three alone. One night I'm cleaning the bathroom and my daughter cries out for me. I peek into her room from the bathroom, the next room over. She whispers, there's someone behind the door. I'm wishing there's someone else to take care of this and I pull the door towards me. There's nothing there. My daughter calmly says, they're gone and rolls over and goes to sleep. A few nights later, it happens again. My daughter screams for me. I run in and this time she says, there is someone behind the dollhouse. The dollhouse is as tall as she is and is pulled away from the wall. Nothing she could have done herself. I pick it up and shove it back in the corner. She thanks me and goes back to bed. I'm so afraid I don't sleep for hours. I get off from work and have several voicemails from my son saying there's a water leaking in our house. I left the bathroom sink dripping so it wouldn't freeze since it's been a cold winter. I had the home insurance people come by and the lady says she can't explain it. She says the pipe under the sink had frozen and the water had turned on full blast going for hours. Nobody could have been at home. She believes that it wasn't something we'd intentionally done since my son was at school and I was at work, but she couldn't see how it could have happened and marked it down as accidental flood. It cost $10,000 worth of damage. We moved out not long after that. I bring a plant to the neighbors. They live across the street. The man says to me, I really thought you were going to make it. I look at him with a questionable look and he continues. I call that the divorce house. Couples move in and two years later, they get divorced and move. You guys lasted five years. I really thought you were going to make it. My ex-husband moves back into that house and he has the kids on the weekends. My daughter comes home after the weekend. She's now four. She seems pretty down, so I ask her what's wrong. She sighs and says, my bloody friend is back. I gave her my mother's cross necklace and assured her that she would be watched over and I hope this makes her feel safer. After a couple weeks, she doesn't talk about it, so I ask a general question. How are things at your dad's? She says everything's fine, so I bring up her earlier conversation and say, well, a couple weeks ago you were upset. She has no idea what I'm talking about. She's 13 now and knows the stories, but has no memory of it. My ex-husband sells the home about a year later. He did admit to me that he knew it to be haunted too, but didn't want to make us scared to be there. It's so much more scary to just like not be told the truth. You know, like if they also know it's haunted, like say something, don't make me sound like I'm losing my mind. This next story is titled, How I Could Tell an Entity Was Attached to Me by My Dreams. Ooh, we're getting a few dream ones, I'm loving it. I'm from Ireland, which is very much a spiritual country. It all started, I'd say, when I was younger, maybe around 11 or 12, and was known as a very emotional child. I would have very vivid reoccurring dreams. I would have the same dream every night for weeks and it would change a bit each time. In one of the reoccurring dreams, I would be somewhere, usually in my house, and everything would be normal until I suddenly realized I couldn't move or speak. I would see my parents but wouldn't be able to call to them. I always knew what would happen next. A tall, old, skinny man in a suit and top hat with half of his face as a skull would turn around and the dream would end. I never saw all of his face, but I knew half of it was a skull. This is the one that stuck with me for a very long time, but there were others. I went to someone about them and was told I had two entities attached to me. It wasn't full on ghosts, but just some energy I'd picked up in my day-to-day -day life that hasn't passed. I was skeptical at first, but once she helped the energy pass on, I never had those dreams again until another entity decided to attach and I'd have another dream. I've been protecting myself now from that energy, so luckily I haven't had anything like this happen in a while. 
Maybe it's a placebo effect, but either way, I'm glad it's over. Well, that's terrifying. I'm glad that it left and you're like keeping it at bay now because that is scary. Hi, Artsy. What are you doing, handsomest mansomest? Him's a shy boy. He's not usually in my videos, but rest assured he's always laying at my leg. Like he's always here. This next story doesn't have a title. It's just titled YouTube. So let's see what's going on. I skimmed it a little bit and I saw this is a possession story. So let's see. Um, there's a few things that could be upsetting in this. I'm gonna generalize it in the best way I can. Nothing is gonna be direct. Just keep that in mind as we get into it. I'm currently 21, but have been dealing with the supernatural for as long as I can remember. I'm gonna start out by talking about my early life for context. As a kid, I would often see or hear things that I shouldn't. This led to me developing really bad insomnia and anxiety as young as six years old. It was, same, I also got diagnosed with anxiety extremely young and my paranormal experiences started pretty young too. It started off small, like seeing shadows here and there, hearing my name being called at night, things people could brush off and say it's just my highly imaginative mind. Eventually this began worsening. Even at school, I would sometimes disassociate from anxiety after hearing, feeling, or seeing things that didn't exist. I didn't mention it to people often as I was very quiet and shy and genuinely thought it was a normal experience everyone else was having. I would take precautions to avoid seeing things like taking a shower without looking at any reflective surfaces or the window, knowing how often I would see things when I did. At 15, I started therapy and getting psychiatric help. I questioned my psychiatrist about possibly being schizophrenic, which was quickly rejected. So this is when things get crazy. As a severely depressed teenager, I had attempted more than once. But when I began feeling much better, the treatment was working. It was in March of 2018 when I ended up trying again. The weird thing about this is that I had been perfectly fine that day, week, and month even. Everything was going smoothly except for the weird faint whispering I would hear before falling asleep. As I've mentioned, psychosis and schizophrenia had been ruled out. I talked to many different psychiatrists and therapists and none of them believed that I had these disorders. On that night, I lied on my bed as usual trying to fall asleep. My insomnia had been controlled at that point, but somehow I couldn't keep my eyes closed that night. There was an odd hot feeling on my left arm and I kept hearing the whispers. After a little while, thoughts upon thoughts began to flood my mind, all of which were terribly bad ideas. I can't exactly remember when or why, but I decided, and then they talk about the attempt and waking up in the hospital. The time that I was in the hospital was a blur, but I vaguely remember my mom telling me that I didn't seem like myself. When I got home, my parents tucked me into my bed and asked me questions. Why was the most repeated one? I couldn't answer it. There was no answer. I didn't know either. I couldn't understand, nor could I put anything that happened into words. I began sobbing as they insisted on asking. Before long, I felt a lack of oxygen and started to cough, a dry heaving cough. My limbs and face began tingling. I felt my facial muscles contract in a strange way and I knew my face was a little crooked. I genuinely thought I was having a stroke. I heard myself laugh as I panicked and eventually everything turned black. When I woke up, I felt a weird sensation on my face still. On the right side of my bed, my mom was kneeling and praying as she held my hand. My dad stood on the other side of the room, frozen in place. I can't remember exactly what I said, but I know my mom said we needed to go to a spiritualist center, which was really common here in Brazil and other energetic cleansings. I fell asleep after that. My mom asked me on the next day if I remembered what had happened and I told her that I remembered passing out. She told me what happened while I was unconscious. The feeling I had of my face being crooked was in fact real. She told me it was an expression she had never seen before and she was scared of how much I was coughing. My mom watched petrified as my crooked face spoke. It spoke of terrible things with an unfamiliar raspy voice. It was my voice but coming from a completely different placing in my throat. She told me I spoke of wanting to make people suffer and wanting to myself, as in like taking the life of someone else. Sorry, I'm trying to watch my words. The next few days are very blurry in my memory, but I recall going to that spiritualist center. For some reason, no matter what I did, I would pass out in every session. Before passing out though, on my first session, I heard a dry cough and a raspy voice coming from another person in the room. No one told me much of what happened in there, but eventually the whispering stopped and I managed to sleep properly again. So this is it. I have many weird stories, but this is the most terrifying one. I would often reason with myself against my fear of ghosts, but they can't even touch me. How are they gonna harm me? Well, I got my answer, I suppose. Good thing is now that I've gone through all that, none of the whispers and touches and feelings scare me as much. I've learned to deal in a much better way and keep myself level-headed against the influences. I can recognize whenever my thoughts stray to dark places out of nowhere, and I know it is just me and there's no addition of something else in my room. 
Oh, oh, that's awful. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I, that is horrifying. Not only horrifying for you, but I cannot imagine how scary that was for your parents to witness. That's just terrible. All right, let's read one more story. I randomly stumbled upon your channel after some paranormal stories before bed. Yes, I know, bad idea. But your videos just felt so cozy to watch and listen to, so I'll be tagging along for the future. Thank you. I try to make it feel cozy. I know we talk about creepy things, but I try to sit on my floor and hang out with you guys and just have a little cozy background. So I'm glad it's working. I'm Kim and I'm from Sweden. I'm quite sensitive to the paranormal and an older medium friend of mine says that I definitely have the same quality as her, but haven't opened it up yet. My first story is actually my first paranormal experience as a young boy. I was being babysat by my teenage cousin at her house for a night due to our parents being away for some adult meetup thing. I was down in the basement playing video games while she was watching some movie in the living room. Once it was close to midnight, I started getting a little tired and decided it was time to join her before bed. So I turn everything off and go into the basement hallway, which was this tight corridor with a boiler room to the left and a spiral staircase to the first floor. And as I get there, I freeze in place, like completely frozen, as I see this tall male shadow figure standing at the end of the hallway. It starts to slowly move towards me while it pointed in my direction. I was still frozen until it reached almost right in front of me, and that's when I finally snap out of it and run upstairs in full panic. I run into her bedroom and hide in her bed crying hysterically, and I go to sleep in her bed with her that night because I refuse to be alone. After that experience, I was always nervous around basements. And of course, things have happened in basements afterwards times three, but I've also gained a big interest in the paranormal after that. I even have my own little EVP. If I can find them, if you'd like to hear them sometime, you can. I would love to. Anyway, I'll make the second one quick since it's more just a quick experience. My granddad was essentially the pinnacle of the family, the one who kept everything together. He passed around 15 years ago, but shortly after he did, things kept happening at our house and other family members' houses. For me, I once walked upstairs to do my homework while home alone, and I always used to go in the room in the dark to turn on the PC first before the ceiling lamp. As I did, I hear a deep male voice talk straight into my ear, saying, What are you doing? Which sent goosebumps flying into the sky, and I ran downstairs in terror. I definitely didn't get any homework done, nor sleep in my bed for that matter, but that was definitely him checking in on me. I have one where my grandma's mother, who passed young, was kind of teasing me in a sense at random times, which was weird, which I can tell that one next time if you'd like to hear. I want to hear it. Please send all of your stories. That was creepy. That is all the stories for today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys back again for two more videos this week, and yeah, I'm excited. I forget what they are. I think tomorrow's is a paranormal investigation that I did recently. I'm not sure what Friday's is. Maybe more follower stories? I don't know. We'll see. All right. Y'all have a good day. Be safe. Bye.